Oh, really? <laughs> and um, the first prize winners were the Miami Sound Machine. So oh, we thought, okay. okay, well, we're in good company. Yeah. 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 That's that's a good. That that's exciting. You know, just going all over the world. You know, with the opportunity to travel. Somebody yeah. said to me. Well, you know what? Do, what is your definition of making it? You know, is it a certain amount of money you get? Yeah. Um, after a lot of thought and a lot of years, I've come to the conclusion that partly what constitutes making it is opportunity. Yeah. You have the opportunity to go places. You have the opportunity to work with people. I mean, we work with you know other artists, um, and you know, it's such a learning experience that if you that to me is one of the great things that, that it offers. Mm -hmm. um, if that if indeed we're making it, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the opportunities that come our way because of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Tyrone? Some of the hi highlights. It's highlights. Last four years, um, right? And, oh. Uh, first couple of years every every performance was a highlight it was just uh, you know I was learning something new I just I still get a high every time I, I walk on stage but highlights you know trip to China um, I'm still desiring to to do a CD as a part of the nylons that's yeah one of my kind of lasting impressions that I want to have mm -hmm. if any um, so I'm still striving um, in creating and writing, and so I, I, I don't know. It, it's all a high. I can't really say what a highlight is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Gavin? For me, uh, the highlights have been many. I was swept up into the group as, at a very young age, I was a mere fetus. <laughs> I was. Uh, I, I had just turned twenty years old, and um, I got uh, the, the opportunity to to join the group. And upon, like, almost immediately upon joining, I I, I was right in the studio with, mm -hmm. with the band. I did um, the album Because and the first Christmas album, so back to back. And this was all brand new to me, so it was very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. I felt like a kid in a candy store, and I was just like, ooh, ooh, very ADD. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And then just experiencing for the first time touring and having fans all of a sudden, and, and, and having the fans after, the con after each concert come up to us and tell us, you know, what each song meant to them or... You know, they grew up on this, or their, their child was conceived on this certain song. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like everybody has a story, and, and really, a lot of the fans have so many amazing stories. And the real, true fans are, are really dedicated, yeah. and they say that the Nylons have, have, have been a part of their lives, and that's really, really touching. And of course, also the travel. I gotta say the travel um, because you know I love to travel. I've got wanderlust that's insatiable, and yeah. and doing things. You know, in hindsight, it's like wow, I just sang. I just sang up the ladder to the roof on the Great Wall of China, you know, wow. and um, <laughs> going down to Brazil spontaneously. Oh yeah, guys, I think we've got a gig down in Brazil. Uh, do you want to do it? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. On the beach in Ipanema. So there've been so many highlights, and there's just so many random. There's, some, so there's yeah. a lot of greatness and in, in, in randomness as well. Yeah. Yeah. So variety. So how would you describe like a typical nylon fan? You said dedicated. Um, Deeply disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> but then that's us. <laughs> they usually don't have cable or, or electricity. But they've got a big heart. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> No, but that must be pretty powerful to hear people come up and say those things, to know you've been such an inspiration and sure. influenced their lives it, so much. It could be humbling. For yeah. Sure. Like, yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Yeah. What do you think's the best part about being a nylon? Wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes, the costumes, the makeup. <laughs> oh yeah, and we sing we it too. <laughs> we got free magazines. Such as this one. <laughs> so tell me about Claude, the name, how you came up with it at that time, kind of the story behind that. Well, that was um, arrived at uh, very tongue in cheek. Yeah. By Paul Cooper was actually one of the one of the founding members uh, came up with the name, and it was a backhanded references to vocal groups of the fifties and sixties, who for some reason named themselves after fabrics. Um, the Orlans, the Chiffons, the Argon, Biscogon. Yeah. One of the reasons that uh, the Nylons was so tongue-in-cheek is that, if anything, people would have thought it was girls. But no, nope, yeah. we were guys. <laughs> so we were just trying to you know, push the envelope by every wrong way, just to confuse the hell out of people. Yeah. And um, it was back in the days when New Wave was the big thing. Yeah. And people thought we were New Wave or punk. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, they said, are you barbershop? We said, no, we're more like upscale hair stylist. <laughs> um, <laughs> are you punk rock? Well, no, are, are you new wave? No, we're permanent wave. <laughs> um, people just didn't know what to make of the name of the image of what we were doing. And they said, it's so outrageous, you're singing without instruments. Well, really, what's outrageous about it? Uh, that, I thought, I mean, it's yeah. the most natural thing in the world uh, mm -hmm. to do. But, you know, people just seem to find, uh, it, it just seemed to touch people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I came to the conclusion that that's what vocals do. They go straight to the heart. Mm -hmm. Something in it, you know, if you hear it in the air, it just, it's a resting sound. You can't ignore it. You can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's kept us going. And you've also said, Garth, that voice is the eternal instrument, mm -hmm. right? Before? So can and you expand the, on that? the original instrument, too. Yeah. And before there were instruments, mm -hmm. uh, people were using their voices. And uh, um, there's something about uh, an instrument that's right inside you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that makes it as personal as it can be, that whatever the <laughs> expression is. <laughs> You guys are making so, fun. No, You're no. making fun of me. No, no, no. We're making fun of ourselves. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. No, that's that's it. So, do each of you have a favorite song? And what would you say? In One the of the nylons, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, of yeah, the no. 200 songs we've recorded. Yeah, the yeah. Of the 200 <laughs> in 30 years. Which of your children do you like the best? <laughs> Do you have a favorite one to perform, or is is there one that you know always gets the biggest response? I do. Or? Yeah, I, I love performing "Up on the Roof." Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful ballad. Uh, Carol King mm -hmm. and Jerry Goffin wrote it, and um, our version of it, I gotta say, is the best one I've ever heard. <laughs> In all modesty. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. Yeah. Because we pride ourselves on stealing from the best, and so we cop parts of James Taylor's arrangement and parts of Laura Nero's arrangement because they both did it. Yeah. And um, you know, so it's like Hegel's dialectic when two two thoughts you know merge and, and make one, and that's uh, kind of what we ended up with. Mm -hmm. Wow, I've never seen the intellectual side of you before. <laughs> well, and you never will again. <laughs> now my show is shot. I can't go on stage. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> and people have also said that you vocally sculpt a song, so it's it's you know if you do a cover such as the Roof song, mm -hmm. that you're actually vocally sculpting it. So can you expand on that? Like, think, do you think of Ghost <laughs> when Patrick Swayze is behind Demi Moore and there's that pot of clay? <laughs> that was all four of us around the music, molding it. What an excellent <laughs> analogy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just like that. <laughs> just like that. It gets a little messy sometimes, but we come up with something. So is there but, like a process that you go through that, or I don't know, just tell me a bit about how you put those harmonies together. And well, I was going to um, address your question about uh, vocal sculpture. Yeah. It's um, a lot of, uh, of what we attempt to do is to come together as a sound. Yeah. And that me um, means texture. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, I think, where the, the sculpt, sculpting comes in. It's almost a, a, it's something tactile. Yeah. Um, but how do we approach um, a song? Often we'll just dive in and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, from there, at least you know, hey, something's taking off here. Oh, no, this is going nowhere. Uh, it just gives you an idea where to go and where not to go. Mm -hmm. But um, because we're all, you know, musicians and trained, we can, you know, just sort of dive in and everybody can get out of everybody else's way. Yeah. And that yeah. wasn't always the case. In the early days, we were always bumping into each other in the furniture. So. <laughs> now, were you surprised uh, when your first album ever went platinum and then the second one followed? No, I was, surprised. I was surprised when the following 10 didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, we had already toured the country, and I knew it yeah. would do well because we sort of had the audience before the product was in place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I was gratified that it did mm -hmm. so well, but mm -hmm. part of me wasn't surprised because I had a feeling, you know, we were getting airplay, and there was a, a, a buzz and a demand because we had yet to come up with an album. So yeah. It's sort of the reverse of the way, you know, other people uh, yeah. did it. Well, was it planned that way? That you would go in, and tour first and kind of, you know, get your audience first, um, or was it just? Well, the way we it had happened? not yet been approached by record companies, so yeah. by touring, we again created the demand. Yeah. And then you know, companies started lining up, mm -hmm. and so we were able to sort of cherry pick, mm -hmm. um, decide which offers to accept and which not. Right. Right. <laughs> 